This is a popular story with my family and most of my friends. Amanda is my brother's girlfriend. At the time of this story, she was looking for her first apartment and moving out of her parents' house. Her and my brother didn't want to move together since they'd only been dating for a few months. She opted instead to search for a roommate online. Browsing Craigslist, she found an ad titled something like, Roommate Wanted, Females Only. This sort of thing was common since the area she was looking in was mostly young professionals. The listing was for a room and a house for about $2.25 a month, which was quite cheap compared to most of the other places listed. The occupant listed herself as a 23-year-old college student that wasn't comfortable with living with any males. The other roommate would have their own room and attached bathroom. So far, Amanda was into this place. However, the listing only had a single photo from outside the property. Amanda sent an email wanting to meet the occupant and tour the house. Within 30 minutes, she receives an email back with all the details and time to stop by. The girl worked late hours and wanted Amanda to stop by at 8pm. When Amanda arrives, there's a handwritten note on the front door saying, Door broken. Use back door. Walking around the house, it looks nice, but slightly unkempt. Tall grass, weeds, dusty windows, etc. Still no alarms for Amanda, though. When she knocks on the back door, an older man opens the door. At first, Amanda thinks that she has the wrong house, but the man reassures her and says that the occupant was out and that he was the landlord. The occupant asked him to meet Amanda since she was working late. He seemed pleasant and offered to show her around. Alarms start going off but aren't at red alert yet. First, the guy was clearly in his 40s, unshaven and looked like he lived in his car. Also, only the kitchen light was on. As they walked around the house, Amanda noticed one huge red flag. No furniture. Nothing. The landlord was polite about answering questions, but seemed irritable to keeping the lights on for too long, rushing her around and only letting her look at rooms for a few moments. There was a single room that the landlord wouldn't open, telling her that it was the occupant's room and he didn't want to invade her privacy. As they walk down the hall into the living room, she notices the front door has a plank nailed across it. Quote unquote broken for sure. Amanda's creepometer is starting to ding so she decides to wrap up the walkthrough and leave, but trying to be polite. As she's given the guy her thanks for the showing bit, he perks up and states that he forgot to show her the basement. He claims it's recently furnished and would be a great rec room, and she should take a look down there. At the time, Amanda and the landlord are standing in the small hallway between the front living room and the back kitchen. In this little hallway was the basement door. When he opens the door, it opens outward to create something of a barrier between Amanda and the back door. The basement is pitch black. He smiles, motions down the stairs, and says, Ladies first. What happens next is nothing more than a stroke of luck. Amanda gets a text just as some random person parks in front of the house. Thinking on her feet, she pretends it's a phone call and answers her phone. Hey, yeah, are you here? I'll come out from around back and let you in. It's great, you have to see it. With a motion of confidence, she excuses herself around the landlord and walks out of the back door. She says the guy just looked at her like he was confused. Once outside, she sprinted to her car and sped like hell out of there. When Amanda got home, she told her mother and my brother everything. Cops were called. They took her statement and went to investigate. The Craigslist post had been removed. The house had been foreclosed over six months earlier. It was found out that the house had been foreclosed over six months earlier and the property had been abandoned. When the police investigated, they found that the closed room that the so-called landlord didn't want her to look in was where the man had been staying. There was a pile of old dirty blankets, rotten food, and empty gallon jugs everywhere. More creepy was he had plastered ripped up pages from porno magazines on all the walls in the room. The really scary part of this was the basement. The man had tied a thin piece of fishing twine at about shin level across the stairs about halfway down. The basement was empty except another pile of old blankets, a broom handle wrapped in leather belts, and a small box with a few rolls of assorted tape. 
I was up late looking for goalie equipment on Craigslist some night in the summer. I was only 14 and had no job and therefore no money, so I had to find the cheapest deal possible. I didn't really care about the condition of anything. I came across an ad that seemed like a steal. The pictures showed the pads, blocker, glove, and stick. They were all in visibly good condition. It was only listed for $50. That seemed like an insane deal. I contacted the seller via text and he asked me a few questions, one of which was how old I am. I responded 14 and he told me he's glad to hear that I'm dedicated at a young age. It didn't really seem weird to me what he said at the time, but now that I look back on it, I should have been wiser. I asked the seller for his address, but he instead asked me what town I'm from and that he could just meet me somewhere walking distance from my house. I didn't know how I felt about this, but I really wanted that equipment. We agreed to meet in the parking lot of the mall, which is literally down the block from my house. I stood alone in the exact spot I described for a few minutes, until I heard somebody toot their horn. I noticed a white van parked away from all the other cars, and then I received a text saying that he was in the white van. I replied telling him to come out with the equipment, but he said it would be easier to do the transaction in the van. I had a really bad feeling about this and hightailed away from there. I ran down the block, and when I looked back, I saw the white van driving down the street behind me. Now there was someone in the passenger side as well. I didn't want to lead them to my house, so I cut into some random person's backyard and hopped over the fence. I was on the opposite side of the block now, hiding behind a bush. Within 20 seconds, the white van passed by and turned the next turn, vanishing from sight. It was safe to run back to my house now. My parents flipped shit on me when I told them about it. I didn't get the tag number or a good look at their faces, so all they could report was a suspicious white van. The Craigslist ad was taken down, so I couldn't show it to my parents. I thought it was over, but that night, I heard a vehicle engine running outside. I looked out my window down to the street and saw the white van sitting across the street, but as soon as I looked out the window, the van drove off down the road out of sight. I haven't seen it since. I don't know if they saw me or not, or if they somehow found my address. It makes me paranoid to this day. I was selling a dining room set on Craigslist. I listed it for 1200 but put slightly negotiable in the title. It was a good looking set, but I wasn't getting any offers. I did live in the country though, so not a lot of people lived in my town. I finally received a call about the set. The man on the other end of the phone had a very shaky voice and he sounded a bit off, but I can't really explain how. He wanted to check out the set to make an offer, so I gave him my address and he said he would be over within the hour. I dusted off all the furniture one more time to make it look as nice as possible. The doorbell rang within 10 minutes. I was shocked. He must have lived really close, which in my area was very surprising. I opened the door and immediately felt uncomfortable about letting this man into my house. He was wearing a white undershirt with yellow stains scattered all over it. His pants were way too baggy and had a few tears in them. His gray mustache stained brown in the middle and his hair a complete mess. Basically everything you shouldn't look in public, he looked. Basically everything you shouldn't look in public, he looked. He greeted me with a hello in the same shaky voice as before. I invited him in and he immediately caught glimpse of the dining room set since the dining room is the first room you see in the house. He began walking around really slowly, making weird sounds and making sure to feel every inch of every piece of furniture. I was very weirded out watching this and decided to break the silence by bringing up the price. I reminded him that my asking price was 1200 and then he stopped, looked up at me, and gave me the most unnerving smile I had ever seen. How about 500 he asked me. I laughed a bit at the insane offer, almost thinking he was joking, but when his smile turned to an angry expression, I knew he wasn't. I apologized and told him that's much too low for me. The lowest I would be willing to go is 1000 The man then started acting even weirder. He put his hands up to his head and started making strange noises again, pacing back and forth. He then looked at me with a look of anger and hatred. This man was not right in the head, 
I realized it just then and there, and I needed him out of my house. I apologized to him again and thanked him for coming, which was the most obvious way of me letting him know it was time for him to leave. But he didn't move. At this point, the stare he was giving me was obviously a stare of malice. This man was much bigger than me, and I didn't think I could take him in a fight. But then the man moved his hand to his back pocket, and I quickly assumed he was reaching for a gun. I ran upstairs to my bedroom to my closet, leaving the man alone in the dining room. In my closet, I grabbed my 45, loaded it, and took cover behind the wall, sneaking a peek into the dining room. The man was gone. I went back to my room and locked the door. I called the police and took cover behind my bed in the meantime. It felt like hours before I heard the police sirens outside my house. However, I stayed put behind my bed. For all I knew, that man was right outside my bedroom door. Thankfully, I hadn't locked the door, and I heard the police enter my house. I left the bedroom with my hands raised and showed them my ID. They had me wait outside while they continued their search. I sat there for probably five minutes before the two police officers stepped out of my house, with the man in handcuffs. They told me something disturbing. He was hiding in my pantry closet with a loaded gun. I feel it's only a miracle that the police weren't shot at, but the thing that still haunts me the most to this day was the look that that man gave me through the window of the police car as it drove off. A look of malice and hatred, like the first thing he would plan to do after getting out of jail would be to come back for me. I'm still thinking about moving. I can't deal with the constant paranoia of that man coming back. All I can say that can be learned from this is to be very careful when giving your address to people from Craigslist.